Hi there. Today we're going to look at Inside Delta Force, which is this book written by Eric Haney. And it's the first inside look by an operator uh, at Delta. And really today there's still relatively few books being written um, by former Delta guys. Uh, compared with um, operators from other units. Now, Eric Haney was uh, a senior NCO in the Ranger Regiment, and uh, he heard about this new unit, Delta. Um, it was all whispers on the grapevine. Nobody knew much about it because it was still being stood up. And he um, was... Um, encouraged to apply for selection in 1978 and he was on one of the very first selection courses i think the second ever selection course uh, so he turns up at bragg he meets walt shoemate who was the um senior enzo in charge of training an old special forces guy and was the oldest guy to have passed uh, selection uh, the, the very early carder that um, uh, ran everything uh, in the very very early days so even though Eric Haney had graduated ranger school which is a notably tough um, uh, training course uh, he found the selection um, very very arduous very severe um, physically and um, it was a, a there was a, a couple of weeks of, of sort of getting everyone on the same page and then they really started attacking the hills and then it all built up to the 40 mile the, the final uh, test it all built on SAS selection so he manages to um, to pass he passes the board um, where they fire questions at you and then he's accepted uh, onto the operator training course which um, six month program heavily heavily uh, featuring CQB <clears throat> both with uh, the pistol which was very very unusual at that time in the army because um, most military units don't really pay uh, that much attention to the pistol uh, but the special operations forces do and um, they, they were using the uh, 45 pistol, the 1911, and uh, they put a lot of ammo through it. Also the MP5, um, they actually started with the M3 uh, subgun, the World War II subgun, and um, at some stage they acquired the MP5s, <clears throat> uh, and, and then also the other, the other weapons, uh, M14s and um, CARs and so on. Uh, <clears throat> room combat featured and um, they progressed to actually doing live room combat where each of the guys in turn had to uh, play the hostage while his teammates came in um, and did a live fire rescue and th this was a big confidence boost um, for all the members and they did um, specialised training such as uh, close protection they were um, given courses by the Secret Service and by the State Department. Um, and also they did quite a bit of tradecraft training, uh, agent contact stuff, uh, mainly around um, the DC area. And then <coughs> uh, big culmination exercise and um, they, they were able to stand up uh, two squadrons and Eric Haney went to B Squadron. He mentions a couple of the guys that were there. One who he calls uh, J, JT, uh, it's actually JD. I, I met him later. He was an instructor at Fletzy and a terrific guy and uh, a, a, a real um, live wire. So uh, they had to do a couple of validation exercises, one of which. Um, was done by um, the army's uh, training command and uh, it wasn't very realistic at all and uh, 
Beck with rage did them afterwards. They they got high marks for it, and then he, he just said, "Well, and then it was a load of rubbish. You guys don't know anything about special operations. How can you test us and upset a lot of senior ranks?" Um, but then they did some other um, more interesting and more relevant aircraft takedowns and so on, and uh, they, they were stood up. They became operational just in time for the Iran hostage. Um, uh, um, hostage taking to to have happened uh, at the embassy in Iran, and uh, so they were nominated to go and rescue the hostages, and uh, they trained uh, various places, including um, at the CIA's um, training base, and then they go off and uh, as we talked about in the previous book. Uh, it, it was pretty much a disaster. It wasn't Delta's fault by any means. It was really, to be to be frank, it was the fault of the Navy and with the helicopters. And uh, uh, they failed and had to come back. Uh, then uh, other operations uh, were stood up for various things that never came to fruition. One of the things that um, Eric Haney did was they used to do a rotation out of Beirut uh, to provide uh, protection for the ambassador out there. And Beirut in the 80s was um, a real um, hot area. So it, it was very, very good um, uh, experience for the guys. So they did that. Uh, and then... Uh, Due to promotion, they had to leave the unit because there can only be one command sergeant major and then he goes into civilian life. As I say, it's um, one of the very few and it was the first operator look. Very, very detailed on selection. Uh, he talks about a guy who literally walked his feet off. Uh, when he took his boots off, his soles, soles of his feet came off. They were stuck to his boots with blood. That's how hard it was. Some of the other characters in the unit, um, the, the ethos of the unit, the, the, the way they got on with each other, um, uh, very, very much uh, a product of, of Beckwith's uh, command and um, the, the influence of, of the, the SAS as well. So, um, still a, a really, really interesting look inside uh, a terrific unit.